Welcome to day two of our 21 days of prayer and fasting and our daily reading of Mark. And we're reading through the Gospel of Mark. And so I'm going to pick up today uh, from 1.29 and read through to 2.12. So if you want to read along with me, that would be great. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they, told, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who were ill and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. And they gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming, who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. There's so much in that reading today, but the thing that strikes me as I read through it and and think on it, it's just this expectation everyone has of Jesus, this expectation that he can and he will, or he will and he can, um, change things and free people from demon possession and heal them from illnesses and being paralyzed and just this incredible authority that he has and this expectation that if I come to Jesus, he will do something. And it's just made me wonder, do I always come to Jesus like that? Do we always come to Jesus like that? We often bring our our needs and our wants and our desires in prayer to him, but do I truly expect him to do something deep down in his authority to actually bring healing, to bring change and transformation. Because he has the authority to do that. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. And it's just incredible, that reminder, that we can come to Jesus and expect him to bring healing. We can come to Jesus and expect him to turn something around for his good and his glory. And just, I want to ask today, let's ponder on that. As we come to him in prayer, Let's come with expectation. Let's not just, I should bring that before God in prayer or I should probably pray about that, but with real expectancy that God has the authority to do something, to change and transform and to just display the wonder of who he is. 
And so I want to invite us today, if there's something, a burden on your heart for you or for someone in your, in your family or your community, I love that the four men uh, brought their friend. It's like they had the faith for him. They brought him along. And, uh, they, and so is it someone you can pray on behalf of and have faith for them to expect Jesus to do something about the situation? So why don't I pray for us as we go, about, go into the rest of our day? Jesus, thank you that you have all power and authority in heaven and on earth. That you can heal and you can cleanse and you can forgive. And so, Father, we come with complete expectation today that you will and you can heal, cleanse, transform, forgive. Father, forgive us where we've limited you. We say, come, move, and have your way among us. In Jesus' name, amen.